What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder. I'm Warren Thompson, and what a finale. Loki season two, episode six, the final episode of the season was truly amazing. Go ahead and let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below and rate it one out of 10. We're going to do a lot of videos talking about the finale for Loki season two, but in this specific video, we are going to go over exactly what Loki did in the finale. And I'll do my best to explain it in the most simplistic way possible. So if you're wondering what exactly happened, or if you have friends who are wondering, watch this video and send this to them. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can check out our other Loki videos and our upcoming Marvel videos. We're also giving away a PS5 and an Xbox Series X. All you got to do to enter the giveaway is subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below. So again, we'll do other videos breaking down a lot of what happened in the finale, but specifically we'll talk about Loki really becoming the life of the multiverse in the finale. So Loki controls his time slipping and he goes back to the point to where Victor Timely is about to go out to the time loom where he dies and the time loom explodes and is about to destroy the TVA. After literal centuries of learning physics, the man spent hundreds of years learning physics to try and understand everything that OB knew. He realized ultimately that they could not prevent the time loom from exploding. So Loki realized what he had to do. He had to go back in time before he killed he who remains. And he tries to explain to Sylvie, you cannot kill him. If you kill him, everything gets destroyed. Because at this point, Loki believes that when the time loom explodes, it destroys basically the entire multiverse and of course the TVA. So Loki has kind of realized at this point, he who remains cannot not die, so he's doing everything he can to stop Sylvie from killing him. Because when He Who Remains dies, the timeline starts to branch. They won't prune the timeline since He Who Remains isn't around anymore to control the TVA. The branches will ultimately overload the time loom, which will cause it to explode, destroying the entire multiverse. And this is where we start to get presented with Loki's options. One is he can let Sylvie kill He Who Remains and basically end up where he is now, with the time loom being destroyed, exploding, and killing the TVA and all of the people that he cares about. Or he can kill Sylvie. She tells him this over and over and over again as she continuously kills He Who Remains and Loki time slips back, trying different ways to stop her each time, but always fail. So ultimately, he goes to He Who Remains out of frustration and says, why do you never try to stop her? Fight back. Do something. So He Who Remains stops time, for Sylvie at least, and he says, how many times have you been at this? Knowing exactly what is going on, Loki is time slipping trying to stop her from killing him and he keeps failing. And Loki says, what did you do? And He Who Remains says, come on, you're telling me you haven't learned how to pause time yet? I thought you'd be way past that. And then Loki says, how do you know? How did you know about me time slipping? Because to he who remains and where they're at in time, it should not have happened yet. But keep in mind, this is outside of space and time. And in Loki, in season two, we have seen things happen in the past, present, and future all at the exact same time simultaneously. That's what's happening here. And he who remains says, who do you think paved that road? Meaning this was all part of he who remains as planned. Loki, time slipping, everything that he's been through, Victor Timely, everything was a part of he who remains as planned. He paved that road. He sent Loki down that path for a very specific reason. And he even confirms this. He says, kiddo, do you really think I was just going to sit back and let her kill me? And that be it? The end of He Who Remains? No, like I told you, reincarnation. And what he's speaking about here is what I mentioned before. The past, him dying, but the present, Loki showing up right before he died, is actually happening at the same time. Basically, He Who Remains knew that when he died by the hands of Sylvie, Loki would eventually go back in time and stop her from killing him. Therefore, he never really actually died, even though he did, but he didn't. Loki changed him dying, he undid it, with him time slipping, but he who remains planned the entire thing, so he was conscious of everything. Now ultimately, Loki goes on to tell him, this is not the first time we've had this conversation, showing him that he knows how to pause time. And this is basically where Loki gets presented with his options, and this is extremely important. He Who Remains explains what the time loom actually is. He explains that it's a failsafe and when it gets overloaded with too many branches, it deletes the ones that aren't supposed to be there. Basically, it only leaves the sacred timeline. And it does this by essentially exploding like we've seen it do. And when it does this, it'll kill the TVA and everybody inside of it. So then the sacred timeline will be left, but there will be no TVA to prune the new branches that come from it, which will lead to a multiversal war. Now Loki tries to argue against 
against him and combat him, trying to make up his own way, stating, well, I'll just let the sacred timeline branch and I'll find all the variants myself and kill them. But he who remains explains you can't, there's too many, there's an infinite amount, it won't matter if you look for them. But Loki says, I'll break the equation, I will break the loom. But he who remains explains, well, if you do that, then your friends are gonna die. So Loki decides he can't do that because he can't live with his friends dying. Sylvie, Mobius, Casey, Hunter B-15, and everybody else, the thousands and thousands and thousands of people at the TVA, because it is huge, we've seen it, we've seen the city, they'll all die, and from there they won't be able to monitor any versions of Kang the Conqueror. There won't really be anybody to hunt down Kang. So this is where Loki kind of understands what he who remains is saying. He's saying that Loki has two choices. He either kills Sylvie to prevent her from killing he who remains. That option gives him this. He who remains stays in charge, he monitors the sacred timeline, continues to prune branches, and the multiversal war never happens and everything doesn't get destroyed. So that's option one. Option two is to basically allow what happened in the finale of Loki season one to play out, which would bring Loki to where he was, where the time loom exploded, it would kill the TVA and everybody in it, all of his friends, and then ultimately the sacred timeline would branch out again and a multiversal war would happen and everything would be destroyed and there would be no TVA there to prevent it. So his two choices are, let Sylvie kill Kang and all of his friends will die and the multiversal war will happen and everything will get destroyed because the TVA and nobody else will be there to combat the Kang variants, or kill Sylvie, the woman he loves, also who is himself. Let's not forget that, and I love that fact. So basically, Loki understands these are his choices. There's nothing else that he can do. That is, until he talks to Mobius and Sylvie. Now, Mobius he goes to talk to basically about how do you choose? He wants help from his friend. He basically has to choose between the destruction of the multiverse and everybody he loves, or the one person that he loves the most. And it's only by speaking to Sylvie, the person that he loves the most, that gets him to understand something that he actually could do, a third option. Sylvie says, do you really want to be the god that takes away everybody's free will? That's the option of killing Sylvie and allowing he who remains to continue to prune every timeline except for the sacred timeline, offering no free will to anyone. Ever. Everything is predetermined and written by he who remains. But Loki says, but what good is free will if everyone's dead? And here's where Sylvie sparks a new idea in Loki's head. She says, who are you to decide we can't die fighting? Then she says, you're replacing one nightmare with another. And you can see in this scene, Loki gets a spark of an idea. He realizes what he can now do. Loki then says, if there's a hope that you can replace that thing with something better. The key word here is replace. Then Loki goes back in time to right before the time loom explodes, right before Victor goes out and dies. And Loki says, I know what I want. I know what kind of God I need to be. Then he goes out and he himself destroys the time loom. It doesn't activate the failsafe. It doesn't explode, causing a huge explosion that would kill the TVA and everybody inside of it, but he takes it down himself. And he knows what he's doing. He's doing it for a very specific purpose. After he takes out the time loom, he sees that all of the timelines, all of the branches, are dying. And this is an extremely important part. Notice he grabs one timeline at first, enchants it, gives it life, but when he lets go, it dies. So this is really important. Loki has to continuously be giving life to these branches, to these timelines, or they will die. Literally, the entire multiverse will die unless Loki gives them life. And Loki knows this. He knows that this is what he has to do. He is essentially replacing the time loom. He is replacing he who remains. He was presented with two options, but he chose his own path, his own way, which is who Loki really and truly is. So now Loki, having spent centuries time slipping and learning more about time can now control time. So what does he do? He cuts a hole in space and time. And it looks like he goes back to where the void was, to where the citadel at the end of time was, where he who remains was, and he takes the timelines there. So he is right now existing outside of space and time, and he takes the multiverse with him, and he essentially becomes the power source, the life of the entire multiverse. Without him, there are no timelines. There are no universes. There's nothing without Loki now. Loki is literally the life of the multiverse. So he sits on his throne and he becomes Yggdrasil, 
which in Norse mythology is a large tree of life that connects the nine realms of existence. And it's sort of a cosmic axis that binds all of existence together. And it represents the interconnectivity of everything in existence. We actually saw Yggdrasil in the very first Thor movie. And Thor explains to Jane that her world is one of nine realms of the cosmos linked to each other by the branches of Yggdrasil, the world's tree. So Loki is now essentially Yggdrasil. He is everything that holds the interconnectivity of the entire multiverse of the entire existence together. And Loki did this so his friends could live and so everybody in every universe could have free will. No Kang variant, controlling time, writing time, but the TVA does exist, but they exist for a new reason now. We saw this at the end. They solely exist to hunt down problematic Kang variants. So they are no longer pruning timelines. They are letting the multiverse exist. They are giving people their free will, except for Nathaniel Richards' evil Kang variants. So essentially, they are trying to stop the multiversal war, and they believe that this will work. Unfortunately, we know Secret Wars is coming, and we know that the Council of Kangs are already here, along with thousands of other Kang variants, and really advanced variants of Kang the Conqueror, not like Victor Timely, but ones born in the 31st century, can figure out how to exist outside of space in time so they can avoid being in any universe, but they can exist outside of a universe, which the TVA can't detect and Loki probably can't detect either, because we see at the end that Loki can monitor the multiverse. He heard Mobius say, let time pass by, and he smiled because he heard it, he observed it. He can observe probably every single universe, but he can't leave because he holds it all together. So now Loki is essentially the multiverse. He's literally holding it all together and giving it life. It can't exist without him now. He is Yggdrasil. He is the tree of life, giving life to every universe. So he is the savior of the multiverse. That is his glorious purpose, which by the way, episode one of Loki season one is called Glorious Purpose. And this episode, the finale of Loki season two is also called Glorious Purpose. So that is also an Ouroboros, a snake eating its own tail, a time loop, which could signify the end of the Loki series. And if this is the end, what a phenomenal end. Although I do believe we'll probably see Loki in Avengers Secret Wars again. But go ahead and let me know your thoughts about this. I hope this video helped. Again, you have to understand what happened during the episode. Loki presented with the two choices, him taking taking his own path. He saved his friends. He saved the TVA. He saved the multiverse. He who remains is now dead. The TVA are hunting down Kang variants and Loki is holding the entire multiverse together and giving it life. Let me know your thoughts about this in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be alerted when we do our other Loki videos and of course other Marvel videos. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter and as always thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.